the Republican are expected to object to Allison. So, Leanne, we keep saying that these objections will not change the outcome of the election, but can you just explain to our viewers why not so they're really clear on what is happening on the stairs? Such a great question. Um, the reason is it's because after these objections are debated, they have to be voted on by the House and on the Senate. And the House, of course, is controlled by Democrats. Democrats are not going to agree to these objections. In the Senate, there's only up to 13 Republican senators who have uh, come out in some sort of support, perhaps, of these objections. So that is nowhere close to the 51 senators they need a simple majority to for these objections to move forward. So the thing, this is a process of futility. It's not going to go anywhere, but it is an effort of these Republicans to gain the favor of the president. Leanne, we also keep saying that it's not all Republicans. This is dividing the Republican Party into two camps. What are you hearing uh, from the GOP, uh, the GOP members who are against this election challenge? Yeah, well, the president called these GOP members the surrender caucus. But I will say, Allison, that that surrender caucus is actually growing. The reason is because we heard from more uh, Senate Republicans, even today, even Senate Republicans who are facing re-election in 2022, who are coming out against this, including Senator uh, Moran of Kansas, who's not a, a high-profile name, someone we haven't heard a lot about, but he's from a conservative state, and he says that this is not the role of Congress to change, to determine who the electors are and who the electors are going for. The only role of Congress is to count the electors are all calling Republicans who have come out locally and publicly to object to their colleagues. And that's amazing within itself, the fact that people feel that they have to put out a statement in opposition shows that this is a very tenuous time for the Republican Party, a party that is supposed to say that they are 100% for the Constitution and for state rights. Well, some of their members are acting in the exact opposite way, saying that, uh, you know, these things are unconstitutional, Allison. So Leah, I think everyone wants to know just how much longer this can drag on. After tomorrow, do the Republicans have any other uh, options to legally overturn the election? They, they don't. And some Republicans and most Democrats say even if they don't have any role tomorrow, either but after tomorrow, um, it, they, the options are dwindling. Although, Allison, with this president, you just can't you can't mark anything off the book because. There's still 14 days left until Inauguration Day, and who knows what is going to happen. But as far as changing the outcome of the election, chances are zero tomorrow, and they're going to remain zero after. Yeah, Leanne, but like you said, we just want to know, until they are moving the furniture out of the White House, just about anything is possible. So we'll see what the next couple of weeks look like. Uh, Leanne Caldwell uh, filling in with uh, all the details
Thank you so much for watching.